Good morning, I'm Ray Lee with Speedboat Magazine here with Mercury Racing at the 2022 Miami International Boat Show at Sea Isle. We are with Ryan Zavitsky of Mystic Power Boats. How are you, Ryan? I'm great. Good. Hey, uh, we are on this beautiful M4200. Yes, sir. Uh, tell us about it. Well, uh, the 4200 is our flagship. Uh, it's kind of been um, the best seller, the most uh, iconic part of uh, Mystic, uh, probably in about the last seven to eight years. Um, and most people know our history of building offshore uh, uh, race uh, catamarans and then transitioned into the uh, production um, uh, pleasure uh, world in about 2015. And uh, this uh, model has really taken off. Uh, since then, we've uh, developed a 38-foot model, uh, very similar to this, just a little smaller in size. Uh, and we also have a C4000 uh, catamaran. Awesome. So uh, between the 3800 and the 4200, 38 footer and a 42 footer, uh, what's the, the the more popular model? Actually, uh, they've both evened out. Uh, it's uh, about the same as far as sales go. Yeah. Uh, we really, uh, I think the 38 took a little bit of time to kind of catch on. You know, people maybe, maybe thought, well, why do you want a little smaller version of the same boat? However, you know, uh, after getting it on the water and, and uh, more people owning them, running them, uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit more nimble boat, a little easier to trailer sure. uh, if you're going to, you know, do some poker runs and travel around the you know, country doing different things. Uh, you know, some people, their, their docks and stuff, uh, you know, uh, they had 38, 39 foot boats in the past. Uh, and so the 42 is just a little bit big for that. So the 38 fits that well. And so they've, they've both kind of evened out. Um, they have their strong points. Sure. And uh, John Costker, owner of the company, um, is a naval engineer, so the performance of the boat, is, uh, all your boats are amazing. Absolutely. Yeah, because uh, he has a degree in, in, in the design and everything else like that. So everything is very thought out. Uh, show us the, uh, we're standing in the bow of the 4200. Show us around. Okay, so uh, the standard seating arrangement would uh, would not be the loungers. It would be you know your traditional side seating with armrests, uh, and then this is the forward-facing lounger option, uh, which we developed um, uh, with a PPI. Uh, I think about a year and a half ago, um, and the customers have loved it. Um, it's an upgrade that gets you an extra couple cup holders. Uh, I think uh, we're we're now standard with the bow lounger setup. You're getting cell phone chargers uh, in each side. Uh, and extra USB ports to charge phones or devices, etc. Um, we now have uh, storage compartments under the bow uh, seats up here in the front. Um, underneath where you're standing now is the uh, fender storage locker. Uh, it's uh, a place to keep all your fenders, dock lines, and all in the same place. You're not hunting all over the boat for them and bouncing around and trying sure. to figure out where to put them. Um, up in the front, we have our windlass hatch. The, uh, the, you got a, a manual switch in the front, or you can operate it from the helm. Um, underneath this step hatch here, we have a, a wash down, freshwater wash down to rinse the boat down with. So um, uh, it looks the, the bow lounge uh, option has really caught on. I want to say over half the boats have it now. Oh wow, it, it's very cool. I mean, uh, just looking around, it looks like everything has been very well thought out. This area here is yep. uh, available for a table setup, correct? Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah we have a, a table mount up here in the bow, and there's also one in the cabin area. Right. And then looking back here, we've got two forward facing lounges with drop-down cup holder and, and stereo uh, controls I see. Yeah, uh, we, you can fold the, the uh, cup holder back up and have seating for three people on here, uh, plenty of room. Uh, it's actually kind of the preferred seat uh, for a lot of people. Um, you know, uh, you got the stereo control up here. We're now also putting a similar to up in the front. We're putting uh, more USB outlets uh, right above the stereo control so you can charge devices. It seems like people more and more, you know, you have 15, 16 people on a boat and you've got all these cell phones all over the place and <laughs> right. they want a place to be able to charge them, you know. Yeah, and then I'm looking at the speakers that are all over the place. Tell us about the sound system. Well, we kind of have three different levels. Uh, we have a silver, a platinum, and then uh, this is what we call our platinum plus. This is for the guy that just wants a little bit more, you know. Sure. Uh, so uh, standard would be like the 10 inch subs uh, and uh, seven, seven speakers um, with a few, I think we have two eight eights. Well, this system, uh, this platinum plus, which is what this boat has, upgrades the 10 inch subs to the 12 inch subwoofers. Uh, and then uh, I want to say about uh, four more of the seven sevens upgrade to the eight eights. We had an extra amplifier to it. Wow. Um, it's just, uh, I think overall we have 24 speakers. Um, yeah, it's overkill, but uh, you know, it, it, sounds, like sound. it sounds great. You yeah, know? so um, they have a great time when they're on board. Yeah, sure. and, and uh, we have a great partnership with JL Audio. Um, the equipment and the service have been fantastic. Fantastic. So, and then is this Sea Deck all throughout the boat? Actually, this is Gator Step. Gator Step. Uh, we've been using Gator Step now exclusively for about a year. Okay. Uh, they've uh, they've really stepped up the game as far as um, 
what they'll do for us as far as customizing options, um, you know, a warranty, uh, just standing behind the product. Yeah. Uh, you know, any, I, I have a customer right now who is building um, a, a new cat and a 3800 and he wanted to do something custom. So he's been working with uh, Mark Gibbs from uh, Gator Step and uh, they're doing a lot of uh, like custom burning and etching and laser etching, just kind of one of a kind to the boat. Outstanding. So. Well, I mean, uh, Mer uh, Mystic had definitely cut their teeth and, and earned their reputation on, on like you said, the uh, performance go fast cats. And yeah. um, primarily, uh, the, the, the center consoles are primarily what you're doing nowadays, correct? Well, actually, we've uh, the cats have caught up. Uh, we built oh, the C4000, nice. and uh, I think it had a little slow start. You know, we have a different cockpit layout, you yeah. know, open to the back. Uh, we wanted to build a boat that was fast but still usable sure you know people are tired of kind of sliding off the back of the boat and you know you know uh, trying to walk on a slip and slide to hook up dock lines and things yeah. and uh, we kind of saw that as we were getting into the market and so we developed an open cockpit uh, design to be able to get to the back of the boat hook up dock lines easy to walk around the windshield to get back up to the bow uh, and uh, that really I think it took a little while for people to kind of realize what the point of it was and, and now that we're out there using them and people are owning them they're seeing how usable the boat is That's great and, to hear because yeah. Uh, yeah I've been on that boat and it's such a fun boat to be on absolutely and, and uh, very user-friendly. Uh, take a take us walk through the uh, yeah. rest of the boat, okay. please. Uh, as we talked about the, the uh, console lounger here, um, this is uh, this is storage compartment. Uh, it's it's got a drain trough around it, so this can be dry storage for anything you'd have. Uh, you know, fenders, dock lines, flip flops, whatever. Um, we'll look in the cabin in a few minutes. But as we walk this way, uh, one of the things we developed in the very first model was the wind door. Uh, center consoles tend to have a wind tunnel effect coming down through here at 60, 70, 80 miles an hour. So you open this up between the wind door and the side deflectors on the windshield. Uh, it really blocks the wind back there. You can have a conversation. You can hear the stereo. Uh, it's comfortable. Uh, so that's the purpose of that. It works really well. Uh, it's neat on sea trials. You can run a little ways with that. You know, closed. People see the difference. Open it up, and they're really amazed at how much that helps. It's very solid looking and feeling. Absolutely, so it definitely uh, keeps the wind away. Yes, yeah, yeah. for sure. So Ryan, we're here at the uh, the cabin of the 4200. This thing, uh, the fit and finish in here is amazing. Tell us about what's, what we're looking at. Okay, well, I'll tell you, one of the misconceptions of a center console from a lot of people is that, you know, if you have a cabin, that it's only a place maybe just to have a toilet or something. But uh, yeah. we really try to make something usable and give you enough room, uh, you know, for a taller guy to stand in here. So there's uh, over seven foot of headroom uh, when you're standing. Um, the bunk is um, uh, big enough uh, for two people to sleep and, and fit comfortably. Uh, we have uh, lighting up in there above the bunk uh, mirror. We have your uh, traditional lighting in the cabin. Um, every boat comes standard with a toilet, uh, a sink and then you have the option for having a refrigerator or a microwave uh, if you choose. Uh, we can even put a TV in it if somebody wants. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, we try to develop something that's, that's usable for, for sure. you know, you wouldn't want to stay in it maybe a week, but for a, a night or two or a long weekend. Yeah. Uh, we also option, uh, offer an air conditioning option. This boat has AC in it, so you, know, you can be comfortable you know, when you're yeah. sleeping at night. And I'm seeing a lot of uh, storage space. Yeah. Uh, you got cabinets overhead. Yep over the uh, the sink by the by the head it's yeah we've got st storage under the under the stairs we've got storage under the sink um, here above the sink uh, multiple cabinets uh, we've got uh, USB ports and chargers up in the cabinet for cell phones or tablets or whatever um, yeah trying to accommodate as much as possible like I said you know when you have a lot of people on a boat and traditionally on a center console you'll yeah. have you know, anywhere from you know four or five people to 15 uh, they want a place to put stuff sure it looks very clean and very uh, comfortable to, to hang out here yeah we've got a, a fantastic crew at the factory that has uh, they've come a, a long way and they work really hard at uh, doing a good job on the fit and finish and you know we try to make sure that the quality goes throughout the entire boat sure I'm, I'm looking at the, what looks to be a flip up option underneath the, the berth yeah in the 4200 the center can be removed and uh, there's an option uh, uh, for the table to go in uh, the same table that would go in the bow there's a oh. mountain so you, in the bottom so you can put a table down there and have more like a, a u uh, seating arrangement uh, or put the center back in and you have a bunk oh that's awesome so again you know it's very well thought out very very well laid out so mm -hmm. Very impressive, Ryan. Thank you. Now we're at the helm. Those are some very big Garmin screens, Ryan. Yeah, these are Garmin's uh, 8622s. Uh, uh, we also offer a 24-inch version for somebody who wants a little bigger screen. The 22 is is the most common. Uh, it works really well. 
Uh, you know, sometimes people ask, why do you want a bigger screen? Well, if you're running along offshore and it's, you know, three, four footers and you're running 65, 70 miles an hour, the larger something is that you have to try to hit with your finger, the better. Sure, uh, right. and, and, and the quicker you can see something bigger, uh, it's helpful. So um, that would be the purpose. Uh, great partnership with Garmin. They've been fantastic to work with. Their product is great. Um, the, uh, the bow thruster you see here, that's standard on every, every uh, 38 and 42 now. Oh, wow. Fantastic. Yeah makes it a lot easier yeah. around, especially on windy days, right? Yeah, you don't always need it, especially with like a quad engine boat, yeah. but uh, you know, a day like today where it's a little breezy or you've got a strong current, it helps to have it there. And then uh, all the stereo con controls are uh, incorporated into the Garmin screens, correct? Yeah, absolutely. You know, you can go to uh, your media and control the stereo on, on either Garmin screen. And then we also use a, uh, um, a Fusion head unit that interfaces well uh, with the Garmin screens to control. If, you, if you've got other stuff up on your screens, you sure. still have the head unit you can control it with. So I'm looking at the layout of the dash. It looks very clean and very simple, yep. yet uh, very user friendly. It looks like everything is in the right place. Yeah, we uh, we actually it's it's not exactly the same on every boat. We we outfit the dash layout uh, based on what the boat might have for options. You know, if it's got uh, autopilot or uh, as like this boat has a, a sea keeper, so you have a sea keeper control screen. And so we might move things around a little bit, but we try to keep it all within reach of the the captain when you're running, so you're not looking for something and easy to view, but also out of the reach of maybe somebody else bumping it when you're running along. No, absolutely. Now, uh, for those that don't know, tell us about the Sea Keeper option. Well, a Sea Keeper is a gyro stabilizer. Uh, I would say probably the most common misconception is that you can use it while you're running. Uh, right. I can't tell you how many customers <laughs> that come up and they ask you about, well, why would you do that? We don't do any fishing. And they're like, no, no, we use it when you're running. Uh, you know, the boat's very stable and handles, you know, wakes and rough water well, but when you're running at 75 or 80 and say you're in a poker run and you know you always get that boat roll as you go in between all the wakes and you know you're running with 40 50 other boats right. uh, the sea keeper just really stabilizes the boat and keeps it from having that roll uh, yeah. you know you really don't even have to back off the throttle you know? wow so no, it works it, really well it does work very well especially when you're bored somewhere and that yeah it's a little bit rough out it keeps the boat dead calm right? sure does yeah absolutely so i'm looking at uh, two rows of seating yep. uh, with flip up tell us about the flip up Okay, well, I mean, you've got the option. It actually kind of gives you three options. Uh, you know, when you flip the bolster up, you can just, it acts as a leaning post. You flip it down. Uh, you can sit down in the seat, uh, but then you, we've got uh, times where maybe somebody uh, might be a little shorter or still has a hard time seeing over the bow. You can flip it up, and uh, we offer two heights of footrest. So with the seat flipped up, you can then sit up on top of the bolster with your feet on the top footrest and, and see over. Uh, that's typically what a lot of people do in the back seat to see over whoever's in the front seat. Yeah. So, uh, and then the seating arrangement, this is the, uh, the double row bolster. Uh, you have uh, six forward facing seats. We also offer an option of a rear facing seat uh, with a cooler underneath it. Oh, fantastic. Tell us about the upholstery. Uh, all of our upholstery is done at Premier Performance Interiors over in Sarasota. Uh, we work with, uh, we've worked with them since the beginning. Uh, they developed the interior for the 4200. They also build the interior for the 3800 and M4000. Uh, and any other models that are to come. Uh, they do a fantastic job. Um, anytime we have any little issues or anything, they immediately address it. Sure. Um, they uh, always stay uh, as best as they can. They stay on schedule with getting us the upholstery when we need it, um, even changing things around. You know, if we have to change, sometimes boats will change in order of production and, and they'll meet that need. Yeah, no, it looks great, especially these armrests right here in between the, lounge, uh, the seats. Yeah, uh, it's yep. beautiful. Uh, moving towards the back, we've yeah. got uh, the rear lounges, right? And then cup holders all the way across yeah just like speakers you can never have enough cup holders so <laughs> uh you know when you're moored up somewhere or you're at a, a show or an event or a poker run you know everybody wants to hang out uh, we have such a, a big hard top it's nice to stand under the shade or get out of the rain or something so you want to make sure you have something for your drink uh, all cup holders are lighted this boat has uh, the uh, lumatech uh, poco lighting system in it so everything is rgb uh, cup holders speakers uh, light uh, underwater lights etc um, and then back here we have the uh, slide out cooler, frigid rigid slide out cooler uh, for keeping your drinks cold to put in the cup holders. Fantastic. And then what's in here? Uh, this is just a, I call this the, the uh, shoe storage locker, but you know, you can put anything in it. Uh, typically when you get on the boat, you want a place to put your shoes. That's just the, the first place. So you can throw shoes or life vests or whatever you have in it. It's just more storage. You know, we, we try to accommodate uh, storage to put a lot of things. You know, when you, when you put a lot of people on a boat, everybody has something and they want right. to put it somewhere. So. You know, we've, uh, we've tried to add storage uh, as we've gone along. Uh, that's the same thing in the floor. We've got big storage lockers in the floor. Uh, in the last uh, year or two, we've started adding uh, trash cans in the gunnel walls. 
Uh, this uh, particular boat has four of them. Uh, four is standard in the 42, and two trash cans is standard in the 3800. Beautiful. And then this seating configuration is very cool. Yeah, uh, I would say that lounger right there is the best seat in the house. It I mean, seems like yeah, yeah. When you're cruising along about 50, 55, uh, you know, it's really a little bit of a breeze coming through. It's calm, and uh, you can fall asleep right there. Yeah. And then, of course, on the back is uh, the creme de la creme. That's right. Uh, we got quad 450s. Yeah. Um, have you, uh, what, what kind of performance do you see out of these uh, engines? So a 4200, uh, average speed, uh, top speed for a 4200 is going to be about 87, 88 miles an hour. Wow, impressive. Um, yeah, I've got one out there. The customer just wanted to see more. He, he's, uh, we got jack plates on it, got the motors a little higher. I worked with uh, Roy Mitchell from Mercury Racing and got some setup done. And uh, that one runs just at 92. Um, which for a 42 foot boat is pretty good, but you know most most people don't need that. So right. this is your standard configuration with the quad 450s, uh, and and that runs well. Uh, good cruise is about 55, 52, 55 miles an hour. Yeah, but you've done other uh, Mercury racing engines on here Absolutely. as well. Yeah, yeah, we've done, a, we done well. We've done a, a triple 450 package that runs the uh, low 80s. Uh, we've done a quad 300 package, uh, 300R package, which is actually a uh, for um, somebody that's a little bit more price conscious on, on purchase of the motors, uh, is a great package. It runs uh, in mid to high 70s with quad uh, 300Rs. Um, fuel economy is a, a tad better. Um, still gets out of the hole quick. Great mid range. Just the top ends a little a little less. Sure. And then um, is obviously it looks like four is is the maximum amount you can have on the back here. Yes, sir. Is it um, you can also accommodate triples? Yep, triples. Uh, quad is the maximum. Uh, the, the, the way the design of the boat is, the transom's just not wide enough to put four motors sure. on it. What about on the 3800? 3800, uh, we were only uh, triples up till about a year ago. We built the first quad engine 38, uh, just as an idea to see how it worked, and it ran very well. Yeah. So actually more 38s are now quads than, than triples. Uh, oh, wow, so that's we do. It, it really is. Yeah. Uh, again, the same as the 42, we've done uh, triple 300, I'm sorry, Quad 300s and quad 450s. The uh, quad 450 38 runs up in the uh, low 90s range. Yeah. And then uh, you found that uh, these packages are, are, are best coupled with, with your boats. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We we would only work with Mercury and put Mercury on our boats uh, at this point. You know, uh, the relationship has been so great. Mercury Racing is great. Uh, you know, uh, we we talk to them probably once a week about different things. Uh, you know, they've always got different ideas and things they're sharing with us and things they want to try and. Um, the partnership has been fantastic. The product is fantastic. They stand behind it. Uh, they perform well. Uh, and like I said, uh, uh, Roy Mitchell from, from Mark Racing has been, uh, he's my rep and I would say he's at the factory probably twice a month, you know, just to oh, see how things are going or, yeah. you know, uh, he doesn't live far from the factory. So a lot of times I'll be on the phone with him and tell him I'm going out to do a sea trial. He's like, hey, I'm not doing much tomorrow morning. I'll meet you out there. And he just wants to see how the boat's running, you know, <laughs> see what's new. Uh, so That's it's been great. Uh, excellent customer service. Yeah, uh, 100%, yeah. So what does Mystic have on uh, the calendar for the year? Uh, we've got some events scheduled. Uh, I don't have the calendar here, but I know we're going to try to do uh, as many different events as, as we can. Uh, we're really looking to do more um, relationship building with our customers and our, our family. Uh, you know, we want to uh, schedule more um, like uh, customer events and things like that. I know we've got a uh, in Lotto. We're kind of going to expand on what we did as far as um, uh, a lunch and a day specifically for our customers to, to do a run, get together, and kind of meet each other and uh, maybe meet some of the vendors. Uh, uh, we're, we now we've done it two years in a row. We'll do it again this year. We'll have an event in uh, Cape Coral, yeah, uh, down at the Westin, where we'll have all the vendors there and customers can come meet the vendors. Uh, oh, nice. We started that in, uh, in 2020 and uh, last year, 2021, uh, in December, we almost doubled the amount of boats, the amount of people that were at that event. Outstanding. So uh, I'm looking at probably uh, that even growing more this year. So make sure you give us a call. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, Ryan, thank you so much for your time. Yeah. This has been Ray Lee with Speedboat Magazine here with Mercury Racing at the Miami International Boat Show 2022. Thanks, Ryan.